Hi, welcome to another episode of Bethany Talks About Stuff. I'm your host, Bethany F. DeVores, author of the Sea Address Scene Chronicles, available from Amazon. And in this episode, I am here to give you my review of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Now, Black Flag is a game I almost skipped. I've been powering through the Assassin's Creed franchise. I did them out of order. I started with Valhalla, and then I backed up and did two Brotherhood Revelations, three. Now I've done four Black Flag. Um, As of recording this, I've actually also completed Origins and Odyssey, and those reviews are coming. But Black Flag is one. By the time I got to the end of three, I was having a little bit of burnout, and I just wanted to get to... The newer games, because I knew the format was different, I needed a breath of fresh air. You know, I needed something different. And one of my friends said, don't skip Black Flag. You don't want to skip Black Flag. Trust me. Do it! I said, okay, well, you know, I'll start it. And if I'm hating it, I just will stop, right? And there's nothing, nobody's holding a gun to my head. I don't have to play it. So I started it. Obviously, I played it. Let's take a minute and talk about the background of the game. So this is Black Flag is Assassin's Creed 4, but really it's like the fifth installment, I think, because there was Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, Revelation 3. So wait a minute. (laughs) Math is hard. Assassin's Creed 2, Brotherhood, Revelations 3. This is 4. So actually, it's the sixth installment. Wow. That's crazy. But it's number 4. Whatever. This is the pirate one. That's what everybody knows about this game. It's the pirate game. It was released in 2013. So as of recording this, it's 2023. This is actually a 10-year-old game. It follows Edward Kenway, who's our main character. And he is the grandfather of Connor and the father of Haytham Kenway, which we know those two characters from Assassin's Creed 3. Obviously, he's also in the ancestry line of Desmond Miles. I'll get there. I'm not ready to talk about it yet. Mm. The time of the game is roughly from 1715 to 17, about 1722, I think. So it's a pretty wide span. It follows Edward Kenway, who is a Welsh pirate and um, tells his story from pirate to assassin. All right. So there's your background of the game. Now, let me give you my pros and cons. I have more cons than pros, so I'm going to start with them and we'll go from there. Ubisoft is a company of missed opportunities. Like, I know it sounds weird, but I feel like they've had some really good setups that they didn't really fully explore in a way that would have made sense. And I think some of this comes from the fact that they've churned stuff out so quickly. Like, they did have a break, but... Like, I'm I'm looking at these games, 2007, 2008, 2009, like they just boom, 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 boom. So when you're cranking stuff out at that speed, are you really developing the stories? Are you really diving into the possibilities? And I feel like there are a lot of missed opportunities in these games. And one of the ways it highlights it to me is specifically with the modern day stuff. So at the end of Assassin's Creed 3, and here's where I'm going to give you the big, the genuine spoilers warning it's a 10 year old game assassin's creed 3 even older but if you're trying to avoid spoilers now is the time to skip ahead a little or turn away having said that if you remember at the end of assassin's creed 3 desmond miles bites the big one saving the world Juno's released uh, on the world and she's roaming around doing her thing but the way it went down was just crappy and wasted a wasted character but I still didn't think Desmond should have went out the way he went out I still didn't like that so we pick up in this game the main character of the modern day 
you never see them. It's in first person. And they're going into Abstergo entertainment industries um, to work as an employee on the Subject 17 project, which is using Desmond Miles DNA to e- explore historical figures. And they figured out a way to use the animus to explore the ancestry of people that aren't their ancestry. So like your character is not related. As far as I know, at this point, uh, your character is not related to Desmond Miles in any way or to the character you're watching, Edward Kenway. However, which I thought was gross. Like, I didn't like that. I didn't like they were using Desmond's DNA. Like, it felt like they had... I don't think they really meant for it to be like this necessarily, but to me, it felt like they desecrated his corpse. While I didn't like him a lot as a character, I still didn't like the idea of them using his DNA and his body to create entertainment. To me, it was just kind of sick. Which... You know, they're the bad guys. So, okay. But here's what my problem is with this. is not even that this was so different. In fact, I was at first really excited. Like, oh, this is different. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do with this. Suddenly we're in first person. We're in this, we're in Abstergo Industries and, and everything's been kind of been turned on its head. And I thought, this is great. What an opportunity to reboot the modern day stuff and make it more engaging and better overall. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for them. And then it just didn't happen. It just, it just didn't happen. It just was flat. And that's a shame because that was a huge opportunity. There was a huge opportunity there. That's disappointing. So that's, that was too bad. One of my other critiques and probably the biggest complaint I have about the game is that Edward Kenway, the Welsh pirate that we're playing is not very likable. <laughs> I didn't play the first one, but Altair was at least an interesting character because he kicked off the series. He was the first assassin we meet as players, and he had an interesting story. The second one introduced us to Ezio. Ezio! Ezio Amidori! And Ezio was amazing. And we had him for three Three games, right? Because he was great. Who are you, Messere? Only the most interesting man in your life. Then we get Connor Kenway, who was almost too good. And I said this in my review of three. I liked his character, but he was almost too goody-goody. But at least he was likable. I mean, I'll give him that. I liked Connor. He was almost too goody-goody, but I did like him. I did not like Edward Kenway. It, my friend did warn me it takes a long time before he turns around and becomes likable. I'm like, when does he redeem himself? Because right now he's a conceited, arrogant, selfish, greedy jerk. Did you steal that costume from a dandy in Havana? No, sir. I found this on a corpse. One that was walking about and talking sh- to my face only moments before. I wanted to quit. When I play a video game, particularly one like this, I like to feel like I'm playing the hero. Now he should, he or she should be flawed and interesting. They should have some kind of story arc or character arc. They shouldn't be flat and lifeless. I'm okay with them having a story in which they go from bad to good, right? I do think, however, it should happen a little sooner than practically the very end because I've had to invest all these hours into playing this character and he just was not likable. After you left mother. Well, I didn't leave your... I didn't leave without saying goodbye, then. It was an arrangement, you see, between your mother and me. She said you left her. She said you always talked about sailing the boat and making money in the new world. I did always want to sail a ship. That's true. But not for a lot. To support us. To take care of her. And you. Not me. Mother said you didn't know about me. She said you wrote only once a year and that she never knew where to find you. That's all true and I'm sorry for that. Even then, it was almost like it was too little too late. I just didn't like him. And it, it just took so long for him to finally 
right home, decided he was going to try to do the right thing. I mean, the game was practically over. You're heading into the final missions. And he finally goes, you know what? Doggone it. I have just really messed up these assassins. Maybe I'll just join the cause and finally start to do the right thing now. After I caused a lot of them to get killed and that kind of stuff, you know. I didn't like him. I did not like him. Now, mind you, he was kind of cute. This is one of the very few cases where I thought that the guy in the cinematic trailer was kind of a gooberish looking guy. And then in the game, although the graphics weren't fantastic, um, his looks grew on me in the game more than the trailer. Uh, that's neither here nor there, I guess. But, you know, y'all know I like my hot video game guys. Alexios. Yes, please. I mean, Ezio, number one in Assassin's Creed, always forever. We love Ezio. But after that would be Alexios. Like him. I liked him a lot. So, you know, that's important to me as a woman gamer. I'm just not going to act like I don't enjoy some eye candy. And there's something to be said about the fact that the nicer he got, the more he matured and grew and did start to change, the more attractive he got to me. Just saying. And those were my biggest points of problems. The gameplay did have some clunkiness to it. There were some missions that got to be really routine and kind of boring. But overall, I think Edward was the biggest, like, con for me out of the whole game. Now, having said all that, let's talk about what I did like about the game. Pirates. <laughs> like, I didn't think I was going to like that. But oh my gosh, I liked sailing a pirate ship and attacking other ships and taking all their stuff and having my little fleet of ships and telling them where to go and who to fight and setting them up and trading... I liked all of that. I did not expect to like that. I did not enjoy the naval missions in Assassin's Creed 3. I just didn't. Uh, so I actually was not looking forward to the pirate stuff in Black Flag. In fact, that was one of the reasons I almost skipped it because I was like, I really didn't like that in Assassin's Creed 3. And there's obviously, since this is a pirate game, there's obviously going to be a lot of that. So... Maybe this isn't the game for me and I should just skip it. And I'm really, really glad I did not skip it. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. My main pro was being a pirate. <laughs> you guys know I always, almost always mention music for video games if I like the music or not. Uh, this music was okay. But... The, if you were to sail around for a little bit with nothing going on, the sailors would begin to sing sea shanties. And oh my goodness, did I love that. I loved that. I loved that a lot. That was so much fun. They were singable. And I knew some of the songs actually because I'm a nerd and that's the kind of stuff I like. So <clears throat> right off the bat, I could sing with a few of them. And then they grew on me, the ones I didn't know. And I found a video that I'm going to... Uh, Put in the comments or the description of this video. I found another YouTube video. It's just all the sea shanties by these guys dressed goofy and it's, it's a lot of fun. A poor old man came riding by and we say so and we know so. Oh, a poor old man came riding by. Oh poor old man. Says I old man your horse will die and we say so and we know so. And if he dies, we'll tan his eye. Oh, poor old man. If you like that kind of stuff, you'll enjoy that video. I'll, I'll link it in the description. It was fun. Again. Even though I only had two main pros, they were big enough and significant enough to dwarf the cons. So I really did like this game. <laughs> I mean, I really did not like Edward Kenway for a long time, but being out on a ship was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed taking the forts. Uh, I enjoyed uh, finding treasure. I just, 
I really did like being a pirate. I really enjoyed Black Flag. It was a good game. If you haven't played it, even with all these spoilers, I highly recommend it. I think you should play it. And then, of course, this actually ended up being a little more timely than I anticipated because just this week I saw that Ubisoft is looking at doing some kind of revamp or remake of Black Flag. Evidently, they've been working on a pirate game. It sounds like maybe it wasn't going well. And so they thought, well, if we're going to do something pirate related, Black Flag was super popular. People really liked it. Let's just do something with that. That's exciting. I actually had a little bit of timely news to go along with my review for once. So, hooray! Anyways, Black Flag. Review in the bag. Just let me know how you felt about Black Flag. Did you enjoy it? Did you think Edward Kenway was a D-bag like I did? Or did you think, do you think I'm being too hard on him because it's just a character? Uh, I'm interested to see your take on Black Flag. So leave comments below and let me know what you thought. I am genuinely interested to see. There's a lot more content coming, so stay tuned, you guys. Thanks for hanging in there. If you like this episode, please, of course, like, share, subscribe, all the stuff that you're supposed to do for content creators, and uh, hopefully you'll come back for another one. Go take a like, look at my playlist, and until next time, that's it for now.